Welcome everyone. This is the second part of solved example related to the reverse curve. In the first part, we have calculated the basic calculations required to set out the reverse curve. Like we calculated the length of both the curves, deflection angles and also the changes at the key points. Now in this video, we are going to set out the reverse curve by using the deflection angle method. So in order to set out the reverse curve using the deflection angle method, we should first decide the peg intervals depending upon the length of both the curves. So as these are simple circular curve, so we can use the deflection angle method. So for first curve, we will decide the peg interval. Similarly for the second curve, we also be deciding the peg interval. So depending upon the length of the curve, we can decide the peg interval. So length of the first curve is small as compared to the length of the second curve. So we can take the smaller peg interval for first curve as compared to second curve. So let's take the peg interval for the first curve as 20 meter and the peg interval for the second curve as 30 meter. I just use the value of 30 meters so that I can have maybe uh, 7 to 8 points in between the end points of the curve. It's up to you. If you want more points, then you can take the same smaller peg interval. This is just an explanation. If you want more accuracy in the setting out of the reverse curve, so then you can take as many points as you want. So when you are choosing 20 meters as a peg interval for the first curve, then uh, you will be having roughly seven points in between T1 and T2. Similarly, for the second curve, if you are taking the peg interval of 30, then again, roughly you are going to have seven points in between T2 and T3. How I'm saying that? That I'm saying by dividing the peg interval with the length of the curve, like length of first curve, which is 142.62 divided by 20, we will have value as 7.131. It means we will be having complete peg interval of 7 and uh, the rest would be of 0 0.131 times 20 meter the peg interval, the last peg interval I'm talking about. Similarly, for the second curve, it will be 237.7 divided by 30. So it will be around 7.92. It means 7 complete peg intervals and last peg interval of 0.923 times 30. Now let's move on how we can set out the reverse curve. Let's set out first curve. So the start point of the curve is T1. So that will be the first station. In your marks, you can write that this is actually the start point of first curve. At T1, we will not be having any peg interval. We have chain each. If you look at the previous figure, the chain is 877.016. Chain is in meters. We are not having that small deflection angle as well as the total deflection angle because this is just a point. But as soon as we move towards the first point, so that will be 20 meter away because that is the peg interval. Again, the peg interval is in meter. If you want to have basics related to the deflection angle method and the basics of how we set out the simple circular curve using the deflection angle method, I'll have completed two videos related to that. You can refer to those two videos in order to have the better understanding related to the set setting out of simple circular curve using deflection angle method. So at P1 point, we will have Gini at 897.016 because we will be adding 20 with the chain age in order to have the chain age at P1 point. Similarly, P2 point will be having same peg interval of 20. Same for P3, P4, P5, P6 and P7. All those will have same peg interval of 20 meters. Chain age at every station will be calculated by adding 20 with the previous value so we will have then the respective changes now the last point would be t2 because that will be the end point of the curve and the distance from p7 to t2 would be 0 0.131 times 20 so 0.131 points multiply by 20 so 
0.62. So this 2.62 will be added with 1017.016. So once it will be added, we are going to get the same generic that we have got for T2, which is 1019.63. Now for the small deflection angle, we have formula as 90L over pi r where l is the bag interval which is 20 and r is the radius of the curve so putting the value of bag interval and radius we will have angle as 2 degree 6 minutes and 13 seconds now since for the second point the bag interval is same radius is same so we are going to have same small deflection angle which is 2 degree 6 minutes 13 seconds same up to this point but for the last we can say that the peg interval is no longer 20 meter but it is 2.62 so 2.62 as the peg interval we will have small deflection angle as 0 degree 16 minutes and 32 seconds so now for the total deflection angle we can see that for the p1 it will remain same but for the respective points it will be added with the prius like these two will be added and we are going to get the next value so the next value would be 4 degree 12 minutes and 36 seconds similarly it will be added with this we will get 6 degree 18 minutes and 39 seconds similarly for the respective points now for the last you can see that it will no longer be the peg interval of 20 but the peg interval of 2.62 so on adding these two we are going to get exactly 15 degrees and that is half of 30 which is the deflection angle of the first curve it means our calculations are correct and this point will be the end point of the first curve so this is all about the setting out of first curve in a similar way we have to do the setting out for the second curve now same t2 point will be the start point of the second curve so this will be the start point of second curve bag interval at t2 do we don't have change is same which is 1019.63 no small deflection angle no total deflection angle now for the respective points we had the points up to 7 so these points will be p8 p9 10 and so on the last point would be t3 we have decided peg interval of 30 meter for the second curve so 30 will be added with the change of the start point of the first curve the last peg interval will be of 0.923 times 30 so point 923 times 30 will be 27.69 so this will be added with the chain age of p14 point and we are going to get the same chain age of t3 that we have calculated previously now small deflection angle would be calculated using the same formula but here the peg interval is 30 so on doing calculations we are going to get 3 degree 9 minutes and 19 seconds small deflection angle will be same for the respective points but for the last we will have small deflection angle as 2 degree 54 minutes and 44 seconds now total deflection angle 3 degree 9 minutes 19 seconds now for the respective points it will be simply added with the prius now for the last point we will have deflection angle bit different than the previous one so on adding these two we are going to get 25 degree approximately and again that is half of the second deflection angle which was 50 divided by 2 hence our calculations are correct and this will be the end point of second curve so this is how the setting out of uh, reverse curve will be done because both these curves are simple circular curve and both these curves will, will be set out using any method of uh, simple circular curve whether by taking offset from the long chord or by the deflection angle method but here we have used deflection angle method which is quite accurate so this is all from this video thank you for watching this video